Hello, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville, by fans, for fans, we cover everything Admirals and Predators are related. Our show is brought to you by Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at... Just say the number. <laughs> okay, wait. Yeah. Right there. Uh, lower? I can't read it. There we go. Too low. <laughs> Damn it. It's Just say the number. 414 or you can visit them at HockeyBarkerMilwaukee.com. You can purchase these t-shirts there as well. Or this hat. Or that hat. Yes, we have our Predators hat. Or this jersey. Yes, it is Adidas, so it's current. Also, it's authentic. Comes ready with a fight strap. So, uh, most Adidas jerseys are authentic. The are Fanatics ones. Yeah, the Fanatics ones are not. Um, yeah, fanatics are replicas, exactly. They're the official replica. If it ain't fanatics, you got a bogus replica. Yep, don't buy that Chinese knockoff stuff. No matter how cheap it is. Also, I've added something to my nice little repertoire of jerseys. It's the Star Wars Edition Admiral's jersey. With Admiral Lump Pontus Aber, who currently plays in the Toronto system for the Marlies, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Uh, so that's something nice I added. I uh, I wanted one of the Star Wars jerseys. I've been a fan of Pontus since he got here. Um, yeah, I, I remember that big poster too. when we first started hanging out that I had him sign at the New Year's party. Yeah, I got that same one. Remember, I got those same ones. Yep, those those still sit in my house. In yep, my... I got them safely stashed away with my other autograph photos I have. Yep, and it, it's just nice knowing that those are you can get still get good stuff. Uh, thank you to the Admirals fan that sold it to me. And uh, thank you to Hockey Locker. Uh, yeah, these nice, wonderful, comfy shirts. Yeah, de I like the material. I really do. It's a good workout shirt. Breathable during the summer and looks nice during the winter. Man, it was cool going into Hockey Locker today. Yep. All the equipment and just drooling over the jerseys and everything. Yeah, it was nice. Uh, I'll have to buy some goalie gear so he can start shooting pucks at me again. Yeah. Get yourself a face mask, because I'll slap shot you in the dome accidentally. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, All right, the what, reason we're here. Go yes, ahead. we have several reasons we're here, but two are the big ones. Well, one of the big ones was us just doing a commercial for Hockey Locker. Yes. Uh, Tell them that we sent you. They'll give you great customer service. Um, also, we have uh, the Corey Perry incident. Now, we've had a night to sleep on it now. Yeah, um, it was a bad hit, dude. Yeah. But now, I'm not sure if it was intentional, but it was just a bad hit. It may not have been intentional, but he showed no remorse. He just kept playing. Sometimes you just kind of got to roll with it, though. Sometimes. But he, there's going to be a hearing tomorrow with the NHL regarding that. Yep, uh, he meets with the NHL Player Safety Board tomorrow. So... Yeah, we'll find out more tomorrow once he has his hearing. I mean, like I said, it didn't look intentional, but it was still a bad elbow to the head. So. And he's known for this, so stuff like this. Uh, I don't know. When he was in Anaheim, he never he, really made he, the news that much for being a bad, for a rough player. He he made it for, uh, he. there was a couple times where he got suspended for stealing sticks from players. Uh. Like the guys would skate by and he'd have a broken stick and he'd just grab the stick out of their head and start playing with it, okay. which is a which is a automatic uh, two minute penalty. Oh uh, yeah, it's a uh, unsportsmanlike <laughs> stealing a stick from an opposing player. Yeah. Um. So there's that. Well, uh, as news opens up about that, and Ryan Ellis himself will let you know. To what we know, at least to what I know. Per some of the beat writers, he was at dinner last night, um, looked fine, but... But that don't mean he's fine inside his head, because that was a pretty nasty shot to the head, man. Here's the thing. Being okay physically does not mean that you are physically able to play. Yeah. Um, you know, um, for last season, we could tell that something was bothering P.K. Subban. And none of us could figure it out until they found out he had that back surgery, and which he still has not done, which is why the Preds traded him. And now he's not doing good in uh, New Jersey. So. And now they're going to trade him. 
I thought they already did, or is he just on the trade block? He's just on the trade block. Oh, okay. All right, so there's that for us. All right, what's next on the chopping block for us? News written by NHL.com. Uh, who's the beat writer? Uh, Seeing how we do follow these people. Looking for the beat writer, I'm not seeing a name. It just says NHL.com, which means that they are grabbing quotes from all of them, I guess? Maybe. Well, anyways, what you got, Compton? What you got brewing here? Oh, this is according to 104.5 The Zone in Nashville. Ah, sports radio. Yep. All right. So right now, it is not in my game plan to fire Peter Laviolette. I met with LaViolette this morning. We talked about a lot of different things, situations going forward. We are not co contemplating a, a, making a coaching any coaching changes at this point. The Predators have lost three straight games, including a 4-2 loss to the Dallas Stars in the, the winter. winter class. Correct. Which was yes. When asked whether or not he was felt any pressure by Adam Vigneault of the Atlantic... He said, I'm not getting you into the uh, or the athletic. I'm not getting into that right now. Uh, Pecorite allowed four goals on 35 shots, and Pecorite afterwards said, We're in trouble right now. Um, after that, uh, Poil or Poli, or however you not pronounce it, I believe it is David Poil. Um, We've got some real soul searching to do right now. I think I have to really think about what we're going to do for the rest of the year. I think a lot of people are taught want to talk about a lot of things. Right now, we're not in the playoffs. I'm open, and we are. I am open for business, if you will. I think the standings are close right now. If as the what what when things get closer to the trade deadline. You could possibly see more action. But I guess the point I'm saying today is sitting here on the outside of the playoffs and being buyers for the last several years at the deadline, if we don't improve here shortly, we might be sellers for the first time in a number of years. I'm hoping that's not the case. But as I said, I'm open for business. I'm certainly willing to listen to different teams. Though the process processes on any of our players at that at this point. So anyone could be up for trades at this point. Now with that being said, let's come up with a hit list of who we think will uh Yeah. Let's get into the little logistics of what should be traded and what should stay. Now off top, the stays are, at least in my opinion, and I think you'll agree, you don't get rid of Johansson, you don't get rid of Duchesne, you don't get rid of Forsberg, and you don't get rid of Arvidsson. Benino can stay. Yossi can. Yossi, Ellis, and Ekholm, you don't. Ekholm, maybe. I'd say probably not, because he's actually been playing really well the last few years. So basically, at this point, your trade is... You, uh, Dante Fabro, too young. Don't move, move him yet. Yeah, don't make yeah. that mistake. He's too young. Don't make that. Honestly, I'd say you probably get rid of uh, like Yannick Weber because he's always on the healthy scratch list. So let's get into the list of guys who could be traded. All right. So first off, the obviously, goal, don't get rid of Pekka. He's and don't get rid of Saros because he's your future. He's only twenty-four, and he's got two years left on his deal. Yeah. Now, if Pekka's willing to wa waive his no-trade clause to go to a cup contender... That's to totally his decision and his decision only. But he'd that, probably be uh, shunned by the Predator fan base. Pretty just much, like and, that, that's, and with him being... Just like Ryan Suter. But that's the reason he wanted a no-trade clause. Knowing the situation, I don't think that that bothers him, that if they don't win a cup, it would bother him. I don't think that's the case, because... You know, he made his mark. He's a legend in the league. He, You don't need a Stanley Cup to get in the Hall of Fame. And that's nope. been a proven fact. All right, so let's look at the list of defensemen. So you got Yannick Weber and Matt Irwin. 
Dan yeah. Hamhuse, but he's old, so you're not going to get much. Yeah. Jared Tenardi. Ooh. I mean, hey, if he has any value, why not? I mean, just to shake things up. We know what we are down here in Milwaukee. All right, so forward. <clears throat> Austin Watson's not going anywhere. He's the grit of this team, and you get rid of that, you're not going to be And neither is Roman Yossi because he's the captain, and he has a lot of uh, leadership. So you, you don't want to break up the chemistry in the locker room. You just want to shake it up a tad bit. So, guys on the forward side, Kyle Turris, Mikel Granlin, uh, I keep Craig Smith, but if you have to and the deal's good enough, take it. I'd say Granlin you could probably get some value for. Uh, uh, Turris? Eh. Turris you could flip as long as they're willing to take at least half that contract, if, if not more. If not, we're just going to have to deal with Turris. Um, if they're not willing to eat a majority of the contract, don't then move don't move them. Um, uh, Cali Yardcrock, I wouldn't be surprised if he was moved. Yeah, he's he got va value. He's got value. Um, and, and at this point, you're looking to open up cap space. So the guys you want to get rid of to open up cap space, if you're going to do this, that may not perform well next year, is guys like, and I, I hate to say this because he's having a really good year this year, but Nick Benino at four point one million, he'll be thirty two years old. Yeah. All right, Craig Smith, he is a UFA after this year, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them move him. Granlin, he's a UFA after this year. I wouldn't be surprised to see him them move him. But like I said, Granlin still has some type of value because he's not that old. But with those being moved, opens up space to sign guys like Rocco Grimaldi and Colin Blackwell to contract in the future. Yeah, I would love to see Grimaldi and Blackwell stay in the system, but neither of them really have really, really high trade value. Like, who do you honestly think we could get for Grimaldi? Probably a fifth or sixth. Yeah, that's about it. We'd be trading up a guy that can actually do stuff in the league for a, a maybe. Um, a guy who may make it to the league, a guy may never come here. Yeah. It's just one of those things. Um, among that, uh, as far as also you got Carlton Sissons, who's not going anywhere. He's I think leaving. he's a lifer in Nashville. All right. In Milwaukee, we've got uh, UFAs at the end of the year. Mika Salamaki. Not much trade value there. Daniel Carr. I don't see them doing that move. Nah, because I think he's a lifer in the AHL. As bad as it is to say, he's good at what he does, but it took him forever to get a good shot in the NHL. Uh, Freddie Gaudreau. I feel bad for Freddie. He deserves to be in the NHL, but he hasn't been caught up in a while. So. And then the final piece in Milwaukee would, to be able to be moved that are UFAs is Troy Groshen which I doubt. Yeah, because we need some goalies in our system still because, you know, if Pekka's going to be gone soon, we have to make sure we don't empty our cupboard of goalies again. Yep, and Ingram looks to be ready to back up in the NHL in you the next have, two what years. If they, what if they get rid of Ingram? They won't because Ingram's an RFA. They don't have to pay him much. That's the thing. It's about cutting oh, well, costs. Yeah. It's about cutting costs to make your team contend. But it's also about if you can acquire stuff, why not? Who's like who's got the most value? Okay, let's put it this way. Look at the teams that have won the cup over the last few years. How good were their goalies really? Outside of Washington, how good were their goalies really? Oh, well, and the Penguins won they had Matt Murray and Murray was a really good goalie. He at still the top. is unless he's hurt. No, he's having a really bad ever yeah, since that he's year, but actually no, he's he's healthy. He's just having a really bad year. Yeah, but the last four or five years, Matt Murray was a consistently good goalie. And here you thing, are right about when Washington won Braden Holtby, that guy's a future Hall of Fame goalie. Exactly. So outside of that was also if Vegas would have won Flurry, well that makes Well, Flurry's already a Hall of Fame goalie because he has a few cups with the Penguins. As well as going to the AHL Calder Cup and becoming a runner-up. Yeah. <laughs> to so, uh, to a team here. Yeah. Some. Uh, Wait, Flurry was on the uh, opposing team when the Admirals won the Calder Cup. Yeah. yeah. And now look at him. As he well has the Stanley as, Cup. 
Yeah. As well as Chris Letang. <laughs> well, I think saw Flurry upgrade and got himself a Stanley Cup. <laughs> He's like, eh, Calder Cup. I want the Stanley Cup. But um, just looking at it, seeing the guys that could be moved, I could see them moving Ekholm. He's got three years left. I could see him moving Freddie because maybe Freddie just he hasn't really been given a consistent enough shot, in my opinion. Because they keep like hot potatoing him between Milwaukee. Well, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. I how can he? How can he get settled into the Predators, like? Uh, NHL squad if he keeps bouncing around he can't settle in and focus solely on what to do to get better to stay in the NHL because he's always having to worry about packing up his suitcase and get to the airport you know they keep hot potatoing him it's kind of hard for him to establish consistency if he never knows on a given night where he's going to be playing is he going to be wearing a gold sweater or a blue sweater meaning admirals or predators you know I'm trying to use it in an analogy well, the one thing I will say right now is that's that, in my opinion. Like Freddie, he needs to stop being hot potato. I mean, he's well, he's clearly not really doing much with the Admirals currently because so many other guys in the Admirals are stepping up. All right. So the Preds' last losing season was in 2012-2013. Oh, okay. So about what six, seven years ago now. Yes, that was their last uh, losing season, was in 2012-2013. Was that before Lobula? Um, And that's the year they acquired Philip Forsberg for Martin Erat and Michael Letta. <laughs> what a trade! Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> for well, Washington. Good for us, yeah. Um, they also traded a fourth-round pick for two, a fourth and a seventh. That turned into Victor Arvidsson. Ooh. Um, so beyond that, those are the kind of moves they made that year. Um, they also picked up James Neal that year, the next year. They traded away David Lagwan, which for him, that he was one of the... Um, original Predators, uh, like he was the very first draft pick for the Predators. So, and they got uh, Patrick Eves and Cal Youngcroc out of him, and a second round pick, which turned into Julius Bergman, who was traded. That pick was traded. So, um, they traded Matt Hendricks, and the Predators acquired Devin Dubnik, who then they traded to Arizona. All right. Um, the Predators traded Bobby Butler for T.J. Brennan. That was last year, correct? Nope, that was in 2013-2014. So what year did Butler play for us? Uh, 2016-2017. Yeah, it was the year before we started doing a podcast, right? It wasn't last year, was it? Nope. All right, so on to the uh, final year of when they kind of knew. Um, so they traded uh, some picks around. That's normal. Um, well, why, what got us diving into this little area? Um, what they, what the kind of moves that that Poyle will make. Well, I just hope they do something, because, man, the Predators' season is not looking good, unless they're kind of throwing in the towel, but they should get a tank. Hell, have Daniel play goalie if you're going to tank. <laughs> if it'll yeah. benefit you guys in the future, he'll be a crappy goalie for you. But I'm just saying, over the last, you know, over the last while, the Preds have not really made a lot of Bad trades that hurt them in the long run. Obviously, everything they do, they did for a reason, and it built them a championship. Yeah, they don't probably. trade for stars. They trade for guys that are going to be consistently good, not stars that are good for, like, two years and then basically uh, rely on their name value, like certain players in the league currently do. You mean uh, one Connor McDavid and one Sidney Crosby? Who tend to not play because they don't 
Wow, well, Connor McDavid, he's just in Edmonton. That's just a bad situation altogether. Um, so yeah, that's just uh, well, what's your beef with Connor McDavid before we transition? Uh, he's not a crybaby like Crosby, so that can't be it. No, it's not that. It's just I'm just saying, you know. And and it's, and our hockey is the ultimate team sport, so you can't really say what's he done. Well, he's doing the best he can as far as trying to get a cup, but he's battling a bad team that is Edmonton. His team is his worst enemy. Like the Capitals were Ovechkin's worst enemy until that fluke Stanley Cup championship that the Capitals got. But, in that note, um, we will kind of dive into this a little more closer to the All-Star break. Yeah, we'll also talk about the, uh, the uh, whatchamacallit issue tomorrow after the uh, hearing. Yep, we will get into that as soon as we can if... If anything, tomorrow night's show will talk about it more. Plus, we'll break down two games tomorrow. One. Oh, yeah. Huh? That's oh, yeah, Saturday, yeah, yeah, yeah. W2. Yeah, we got the Admirals tomorrow. Yep, so this has been From Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, you can go check them out. Uh, buy... For every $100 you spend in CCM gear, uh, you get two free Admirals tickets. Which is a good bet. Which is a really good bet because Admirals tickets are affordable. You should also uh, check out some Admirals games if you're in the Milwaukee area or in the state of Wisconsin in general. Or if uh, now the Predators go on the road and you have a jonesing for hockey, come on up here from Nashville. It's not that far of a trip. Oh, uh, we have breaking news. And it's officially been confirmed. Yep, bought the tickets today. Yep, March 2nd, me, him, his wife, and son, we're going down to Nashville to catch the Predators taking on the Edmonton Oilers. Yep. So, if you guys live in the Tennessee area, you can find us at Bridgestone Arena. I'm finally going to a game in Smashville. Finally. Now, all I got to do, there's one more thing to cross off my hockey bucket list. Go to a Predator playoff game and take a sledgehammer to a car. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. That's one of the things I want to do because I think it's so cool because all the money goes to charity and you let play and you let like fans destroy a car. That's cool. <laughs> no, if only you let us do it, Admirals fan. The Admirals should let us do that. Here we go. Hey, well, Admirals. We don't have any place that we can safely do that. Yeah, we do. The parking lot on the backside. Yeah, I suppose. You think about well, you it. Figure it uh, if that we, parking lot's not only for the arena, but it's also for the theater, too. What if they have a show going on at the theater? No, no, no. I'm talking about where the Bradley Center used to be. Yeah, but that's not Panther Arena property, dude. No, but we could rent it. Yeah, I suppose. But anyways, I that's one of those bucket list things I want to do. I want to take a sledgehammer to a car and not go to jail for it. Yep. That's the key to it. That's the key right there that makes me intrigued to do that during a Predator playoff run. So Take the like, car off a sledgehammer or about going to jail. So like Ooh. we said, well, you could get one of these nice shirts for 30 bucks. You could get this hat for 25 This you, hat right here for 25 and You could get a, these It's for, a green screen. It don't have any black. See? You could also get this nice jersey for about eh, a little under 200 It's uh, That's an authentic Adidas. It should blank. Yep, just throwing it out.